people crying out for something fresh, I suppose? Uh, no, the, the reason it was so big was because of the rave scene. Um, you know, we, we would play to 25,000 people, 10 on Friday, 15,000 on Saturday. The government didn't even know none of this was happening. So in a month, we'd play to 150,000 people. You know, and they then had to go and buy your record, and you went to number three. We went to number three with 25,000 records. I mean, we were really good, but we were there at the right time, you know, and we weren't afraid to mix the music up. You just said it all. Now you said it all then. <laughs> I, I was actually DJing about this is about five years ago and some girl come up to the decks and she's like my mum and dad used to come and watch you lot <laughs> and I was just like oh you know what I mean I pro feel a problem with age at all I don't ever think that it's just a number do you know what I mean I'm going to be 40 in October actually so I'm not 40 yet but um it's really, it's really not a big deal, especially when, it's, when, you, when you're dealing with music because it transcends everything. Music transcends the language, it transcends time and space and age and everything. If, if you're going to dance to it, I'm going to dance to it, my grandma's going to dance to it, yeah, my kids are going to dance to it, then you, we're all celebrating the fact that we're dealing with good music. Every single day someone says, oh, have you heard dub hop? Have you heard Step Dub? Have you heard <laughs> Hop Dub? Have you heard Moon Baton? These bands are coming back because they've they're trying to seek the sort of kind of glory that they had before. Whereas Prodigy have kept evolving and keep moving on, you know. So there's no there's no there's no comparison there. I don't think. I'd, I'd just say that uh, the nineties was just we were lucky. It was like the sixties, early seventies. It was just such good music. Now Oasis are kind of pop in the way that the Beatles are pop. Every single record they do is a hit, and it's clever. And um, yeah, you know, the Foo Fighters never went away. The Red Hot Chili Peppers never went away. Every festival in England throughout the 2000s was headlined by one of them two. Uh, you know, the Verve, Pulp have come back, uh, Radiohead, good music, because there's nothing else that's any good. I mean, you know, Coldplay, first album was great, but that's music you go with you to see with your girlfriend and hold a lighter. You know, it's still good music, but it's not that energy of English blur. You know, it, we wrote the rules. We write the rules. And uh, unfortunately, that's stopped now uh, at the moment because of people like Simon Cow and people with too much money and influence. They're not letting real music come through, you know. I, I did go back on stage for the... London. Yeah, Let's one show in the Greatest Hits tour. I was going to do about five or six shows, and I'd done one, and it was like the day after the last time I'd done it, ten, <laughs> five years ago. And uh, it was amazing because no one knew I was going to do it. And when I come out, the response was just amazing, amazing. But at the end of it, Liam and I were like, that was great, man, you're going to do it tomorrow? And I was like, nah, that's it, that's it. Um, at the time, I was doing vocals for DJ Hyper, and uh, that was more scary. I, I, when I could go out to outer space, I was just—I could do it asleep. It was like five years since I'd done it, and it was—it was just like, oh. I said, "Please, Liam, just let me dance to two of Keith's old tunes." Yeah, but everyone wants you to do outer space. I know, but I hate it. <laughs> yeah, Liam's in the studio. He's doing, you know, and I was basically the one out there telling everyone what was going on, <laughs> lying and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's in the studio. Well, well, I'm scared. I, I heard voodoo people and I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't my idea. Wasn't my idea. <laughs> <laughs> you right, buddy? You right? It's, it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> no. No. Uh, it's just, uh, it was just a bad tackle. <laughs> so, <laughs> someone kicked me when I weren't looking. But um, no, no, it's none of that. No magic going on, not unless you're Paul Daniels. Or David Blaine, I should say, unless you guys wouldn't know Paul Daniels. He's a small guy with false hair. <laughs> it didn't need me anymore. It's, that's the simple answer. You know, we, four of us were like that, um, like brothers. You know, every one of us, although Liam write the music, you know, Liam would write a song, I'll say, no, you can't, you can't give that to someone else. That's for us. Yeah, but I'm giving it to the record shop. No, no. That's Russ, you haven't done nothing like that. I mean, I watch it now and I see where I could, some, I could have fit, still fit in because I think it 
it still is awesome, but now they've got more and more tunes, I think the dynamics of the set has changed because for Keith to stay out there the whole time yeah. and Maxim to stay out there the whole time, it, the dynamics has changed. But they've got guitarists and drummers, so it's become more like a band. So it works, but it, does, it just didn't need me anymore. We all knew that. In 2007, when there was, they were taking a break to write the new material, I suddenly find myself with two children and a house to pay for, and so I'm like, right, so what am I going to do now? So I had to kind of think about getting some other kind of work within the music, and I started teaching and, and discovered I really loved that. If you like. Oh, it's on your head. <laughs> no, that was Keith. <laughs> I'm the tall one that stands at the back. That's what people remember me for. You know, all, all I'd like to remember for is being part of one of the best bands on the planet. Also, That's all. <laughs>